James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Hi, it's James Freeman. Hi there, James. Go ahead with your thoughts. Well, Derek, uh, I wanted to respond to this uh, theme, this anger meme that Free Talk Live has about me that I never got a chance to discuss with you. I guess I've never seen it. What's it look like? This anger meme. Okay. You spoke of it last Monday. I guess I you don't remember. On this show. Yeah. You don't remember referring to me as an angry man. Oh. Not to mention the po- the post on Free Talk Live's web page that you all seem to be so ignorant of, but it's named after your show. But because yeah. it's try to put yourself in this so-called who is most certainly a heel's sh- uh, shoes because a remarkable host of yours has what is an immoral and historically perverted assertion that the embargo of Japan provoked the genocidal evil to impact uh, the genocidal evil empire of uh, Japan to attack the United States in 1941. Hmm. And then I had to endure okay. listening to his... Stand by, James. We'll uh, bring you back. I think you should pick one thing, though. Not Rather than like seven things to talk about, uh, or I think you're up to four at that point, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can take control. If you want to talk to James, get on the line. Uh, James, you're back on Free Talk Live. Now, let's reverse real quick because you hit like three, at least three or four topics in the in the first minute of your call at the very end of the last hour. And the first thing that you had brought up was confusing to Derek J. You referred to a meme that was about you. I tried to explain during the, the break that you'd called about this last week. And apparently it was something that uh, that you know, Mark had posted to the Free Talk Live profile. You have to tell me what it is. And I explained that, look, you know, the Free Talk Live Facebook page is administered by five or seven different people. Not everybody knows what everybody else posts. Not everybody reads all of the posts. So Derek J was in the dark, as I'm sure many of our listeners are in the dark, about whatever this offensive meme was. Can you describe for our listeners and for Derek and Mark, apparently, uh, what it was that, uh, that, you, that had been posted. Excuse me for my bushisms. I lost my train of not-so-deep thoughts. That's pretty good. Uh, mm. your, your response to the end of last hour's call was longer than I even spoke. May <laughs> I point that out? Literally, that's the truth. And for, uh, to use your words, Derek J., and as to why... Your two co-hosts rubbed me such the wrong way. Is I literally was trying to discuss the re- remarkable things, multiple things one last had to hear said about me by one host named Mark, who uh, on Tuesday I had to listen to him and your fellow host declare I'm not a libertarian because I, I defend the U.S. Navy not letting shady businessmen businessmen deliver uh, a total war killing machine. It's life and death, blood. Mm-hmm. You're oil. talking about the Japanese, is, uh, the embargo prior to, on Japanese right, Prior oil. to them attacking us in a Honolulu. That's right, Ian. And if, if I'm not a libertarian for not wanting businessmen to deal drugs to, drug, to gangsters and killers, then you aren't either. You're something that I don't even know what to be call, you should be called. But the point James, is— James, do you know Jay, the expression is, about no, embargoes? Please don't interrupt Please don't interrupt because there's one more point I want to make, and I do want to talk to you, Derek J. But the next day I called in to take Mark up on this because remember this was after I called Free Talk Live that they brought these things up. Mark um, and Ian um, called me chronic and obsessive caller and said he sure does like to talk about that Japan thing, but it wasn't me that brought it up on Tuesday. Mark did, and I never got to respond. And then they make me fun of me when I try to respond to him the next day. That's the kind of people you are sitting in between. Okay, right so Derek, now, Derek had a question day. for you about embargoes. Yeah, uh-huh. have you heard don't worry, the expression? Don't worry about what I just said, Ian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What you're treated. Right, we're going to have a conversation. We just need to take turns. Yeah, we just need to take turns on this. I, I'm listening to you, well, and I heard everything you said. We'll take turns. Well, I have something to respond to about the beginning of what you said, which is about okay. your opposition to an embargo, or that you are pro-embargo, and that it sounds like Ian and Mark were against it. And I wanted to ask uh-huh. you if you've heard the expression, when goods don't cross borders, soldiers do. Have you heard that? Yeah. At the present time that we were true? not dealing I'm going to respond to it. At the present time, 1940, when the embargo started— Japan had. That's not an answer to the question. Uh, I don't know how strong their military was in, in China, but I think it was like a million strong. 
Well, I'm going to wager they that you're the only the expert call. on this incident in this room right. or in this so conversation. What do you have to say about so that? Let's not... That's why we embargo Japan. So let's talk about something because that we all their know. Their soldiers crossed the, the Sea of Japan and went into China and have been there for years and murdered millions of people and raped millions of people, tortured millions of people to death. Okay, these are facts. That's why we were embargoing Japan. And to call, say I'm not a libertarian because I'm against uh, open market. For gangsters and murderous regimes. Why does it upset you so much what Mark and Ian think about you? Because that's why they label me as not being a libertarian. And they made so fun of me for bringing up Japan again because they brought it up. You know, I you're also not a libertarian because you support about. war in general. I mean, you okay. support uh, the, the, the bombing okay. of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Of sorry, caller. you're disqualified. Speaking of, okay, speaking of Gabriel's call, by the way, Derek J. Have you ever wondered how much of a better world the place would be if Kuwait was still occupied by no. one living mass murderer? I never think about Saddam Kuwait, Hussein? ever. My sister went there don't. once, and I was well, concerned for her we safety. That's there. the only time I thought about it. Thanks, James, for the call. I didn't go anywhere. I'd just like to clarify. I've never gone over to another country. He keeps saying we went somewhere. I wouldn't go with James. I wouldn't travel with James, and uh, I certainly wouldn't go over to Bob. Well, he's saying we. He means the United people. States government. Yeah, that's but what I he think means. that it's fair to point out that's that not me. Saddam Hussein was pr- was un- under the impression. It, it appears as though Saddam Hussein was under the impression that it was okay for him to invade Kuwait. Now, I've gone back and watched these news clips where they're talking about this, and I think it was Madeleine, was it? No, Madeleine Albright wasn't involved. It was uh, another, uh, you know, uh, the Saddam, uh, Saddam, Saddam Hussein regime contacted the American embassy and said, hey, is it okay if uh, we, you know, go and settle our dispute with Kuwait? And it's like, we don't have anything to do with that. And then they went in and, you know, mm-hmm. invaded the way they did, and suddenly this coalition comes in and drives them back and you know i mean hussein was on their payroll up until that time and then suddenly they decide to turn on him now if it's a miscommunication then let's solve it like a miscommunication let's not solve it like hey this is he's evil look he's evil i mean the, 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 the denial wasn't made as far as the invasion of Kuwait. The United States did not deny that they had given the instructions the way they did. All this war talk is very confusing to me. You know, I got a, a history at a government school, and so I believe I was told a lot of lies about what happened in the past. And so I, I really just have to go on what makes sense to me now. And what makes sense to me is I should stay out of that. I have no clue what's going on overseas. And I'm willing to grant that. James is an expert on everything that happened in history, and he knows exactly how things would have gone. But that doesn't give him any justification or any authority to use my funds to support the wars that he well, wants to wage. He has actually on this show come out uh, against sort of uh, you know government armies, but still believes that there would be private armies and that those armies should be employed. And I've been willing to agree with him on multiple occasions that I think that the um, that the J- Japan U.S. conflict was inevitable. The only disagreement I have is the dropping of the bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Over and over, that's been the disagreement. But, you know, he wants to move it to this embargo. And the the only point I made with the embargo is it's not very libertarian to support this embargo. When you tell American businessmen they can't do business with who they want to do business with. Or else. Or else. You'll be arrested. You know, they're, you know they're, you're going to come after him. It's, that's just Roosevelt going after business like Roosevelt went after business the whole time Roosevelt was in office. Yeah, I mean, look, the def- the classic definition from the Libertarian Party, which by no means is the arbiter of what is truly, in my opinion, libertarian, is uh, the statement that you sign when you join the party, which I took seriously when I joined it, and I've since resigned from it. But uh, when I did join it, it was uh, some sort of statement like, I don't support or advocate the initiation of force to achieve social or, or political goals. I don't know if it says fraud, but uh, either way, uh, force or fraud to achieve social or political goals. And if you're using the uh, the strength and the threat of the U.S. government and the military and the police to stop people from doing business, even if it even if they're doing business with an alleged criminal, as James was suggesting there, uh, that's 
their business, and it's not my business to use violence or the threat thereof to stop that. Now, I could use boycott. I could use spreading information. I could use the marketplace. Uh, you know, letting people know what these businesses are doing and why. You know, why is why is such and such you know, Texaco doing business with these scumbags or whatever? Uh, we can do that. I'm, I support using market mechanisms to try to change things, but not the not the threat of the state. Well, and to me, that's what a libertarian is: is somebody who avoids the use of the state. Well, my point in bringing up with James the quote that when goods don't cross borders, soldiers do, was that it's totally predictable when you introduce force into a mm -hmm. situation where people are peacefully trading with one another and you tell them suddenly they can't, there's going to be a conflict. We will continue and you can bring up anything that's on your mind. Toll free numbers 855-450-FREE. Detroit, they've been having a tough time recently and apparently there's a plan afoot to try to change things. We'll explain here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. And you can call in about anything. We've uh, talked about depression tonight as well. So whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 